I don't know if YouTube likes the video I'm making now about VLC Media Player, because I don't know if YouTube allows you to watch a YouTube video with an external program, but I'll do it anyway. The title also explains how to listen to the radio, the various radio stations, with VLC Media Player. Let's first look at this very simple feature. Open the Media Player, go to the Playlist menu. The menu you see on the left, if it's not already open. With this configuration, you can press the Ctrl L shortcut to open the playlist menu. Scroll with the scroll bar. Go to the bottom of the Icecast Radio directory, see the last entry, Icecast Radio directory, and a list of radio stations will open that you can then listen to. Let's try a random radio station. I'm not familiar with them. Here, this one inspires me. Rock FM. So let's see. With this procedure, you can see that the various radio stations are playing. Let's see. The list is very long. There are so many radio stations. Maybe not everyone knew about this very simple feature. Let's talk about YouTube videos. I'll take a video I made and upload it to YouTube. Let's go into the VLC Media Player. Go to the Media menu on the left, Open Network Stream and you'll see that I go in here and copy and paste the URL of the YouTube video I want to analyze. Then I click play at the bottom. I think the player is having problems now, and now we'll see how to fix these problems. It's not guaranteed that they'll all be fixed. Now, maybe it's better to reopen VLC Media Player, because otherwise it automatically starts the radio. Okay, now if it works, the YouTube video starts. I don't think it works, especially because I have to do some updates. Here's what the problems are, what could be, and what can be fixed. Let's see what it says. The input cannot be opened. Then it tells us that VLC is unable to open the MRL, and now we'll explain what this MRL is. Then there's all this, the link to this MRL, check the log for details. Then let's close and remove this file as well, we're not interested for now. MRL files are files that have the acronym Media Resource Locator, they are VLC specific files. They don't contain any multimedia content, but they are files that help VLC find and locate the multimedia resource, which then leads VLC to the file to play. If the file isn't found by VLC, then this warning appears saying it can't open the file, and that's the error message we saw just now. We can identify a few causes for this error, this error that appeared. One could be the URL. The URL being an incorrect URL, but that's certainly not our case because we entered this URL, which we know is a YouTube URL, and it's a valid URL because we know it. So that's not our problem in this case. First of all, I came back here to the page that I then put in the description the link from which to download VLC Media Player. So it is not a wrong URL in our case, it could instead be a problem of ownership or copyright, and this can certainly be because YouTube may not want to have its files played by third-party software. By external software, and this could be one of the problems, and even in this case, let's see what the solution could be, which is not necessarily the case. It could be a problem with the VLC client. That is, the installed version of VLC is not up to date. Let's check it right away. To see if VLC is the latest version available, go to Help, the last menu on the right. Even if it is the latest version available, let's check for updates. You see, it says you are using the latest version of the VLC media player. I can recheck, but the result will be the same. So this is an updated version. It can't be a problem with VLC itself, that is, the version. Always make sure you have the latest version when using VLC. Go to help every now and then and check for updates. It could be a firewall problem, and this could be one. It could also be an antivirus problem. So let's start by doing this. I'm using AVG as my antivirus, and it says you're protected. Let's do this. Disable the protection for a moment, turn it off, and turn it off. So now the computer is not protected, which is not a positive thing in itself, but it can be used to view YouTube videos or acquire external URLs that may be blocked for various reasons by the antivirus. I was saying, 
it could be a firewall issue. Let's go check our control panel to see if it's a firewall issue. I'm talking about Windows now. I've installed Windows 10 here. Go to this item at the bottom, Windows Defender Firewall. A problem that can arise when YouTube videos aren't playing is actually due to the firewall. So what you need to do is go up here. You see the second item on the left, allow apps or features through Windows Defender Firewall. Let's look for our VLC item. Here it is, VLC Media Player. You'll see that it's flagged as private. And we'll flag it as public. I forgot to click edit settings at the top, we'll see it here. Now it'll let us change it. You'll see that I'm setting it to public and not private. These two items, these three items above that always say VLC Media Player, aren't of interest to us in our case because, if you see, they're not flagged, so they're older installations. Right now, the one we're interested in is the one with the flag on the left. So it publishes and then in the details it tells me caution, it tells me the risks deriving from unblocking an app. Basically anything that could involve a security issue, in our case it doesn't matter. If we go look here, no, I made a mistake, let's go back to allow AP features and let's go look at VLC. And you'll see that it made it public. The flagged entry is public. This, I repeat, doesn't interest us right now. This private entry relating to this entry that isn't flagged here on the left. So the public entry is the one we're interested in. So this could be another problem that's recurring. And always go check the firewall in the control panel. So both the antivirus and the firewall. Then there's a discussion, in addition to VLC updates, as I said, there's a very interesting discussion regarding a file, a file called youtube.lua or YouTube, Luak. Here I'll put the link in the description and this is a file that can be downloaded from the internet and you can see it here, this one is on GitHub. I'll put this link which I think is the most updated on GitHub or there's also on this one code.videolearn.org etc etc. What do you have to do with this file? You download it. Or you download the code here, in this case you do a control A control C, the keyboard shortcuts, or if you don't know them. Select all the code and then put it in a file that we save with the name youtube.lua. You see it here YouTube here is the Lua file you see it here I was at this link you see VLC share Lua playlist here above. Let's go look for the Lua files, the youtube.lua file. These are all Lua files, and you see, I was in here. YouTube.lua, which basically tells us, is a file that tries, so to speak, to keep our PC up to date with the updates made to YouTube. Because there can be changes, modifications, new versions, and this file on GitHub is updated. So you have to go check periodically when you want to play a YouTube video on your VLC media player. You have to see if this file is updated, if we have the latest version. And in this case, you can select all the code here too but you see that there is download file. This youtube.lua is downloading it. Now, once we've downloaded youtube.lua, what do we do? We're going to copy it into the folder where we have VLC. I had already done it. In my case, the folder, the path on Windows C, program files, x86, videolearn, VLC, lua, playlist, and you see that we rename this youtube.lua with youtube. Luak, let's go here. You see that I'm doing it now too? youtube.lua. I cut it from the download folder where it downloaded, if I put it here. You see that when you copy it I showed you that when you copy the files it asks us for administrator permissions because this is a folder with advanced permissions, we could call it a private folder. Even if that's not the right term. This youtube.lua file is then renamed and the extension changed to YouTube. Luak. Obviously, if you downloaded it from here instead. If you do this control a control c control v you copy it into your own text file a text file that you then need to rename to youtube luak here too or youtube lua then when you copy and paste it into this folder you rename it and save it as a text file when you save it see save as remember to include all the files here not text file save as at the bottom here all the files that is, not text documents, so all the files, will replace them. I saved it incorrectly, but I did it on purpose to show you that you shouldn't use .txt, but all files as the extension. YouTube, Luak cares about this. It tries to keep us updated on any changes to YouTube, which may occur. 
So we've seen both the firewall issue, allowing an app to be public, not private, and the antivirus. The issue of the YouTube.lua file, which is absolutely essential, without this file, it won't work. If after all these operations it doesn't work, it means there's a problem. Either the file isn't updated, or there's another problem. Keep in mind that YouTube can continue to update files, there could always be a copyright issue, and so our problem isn't solved. I'm not saying you should go to hell, but yes, it seems that with the latest version, always remember to use the latest updated version of VLC, you can't view YouTube videos. If after all the changes made it still doesn't work, try making some changes to VLC's settings. I call them more advanced changes, for example, disabling the cookie forwarding setting. To do this, go to Tools, Preferences, go down here, you'll see that Simple is selected. We'll select all, go to Encoder Input. Now go to Login Forms here and then go to HTTPS, note. Not HTTPS with the S in brackets, but HTTPS altogether. Uncheck the Cookie Forwarding option and click Save. Why do we do this? Because YouTube can modify security protocols to protect itself. And so if we forward cookies from VLC, those cookies could be interrupted because they're no longer compatible with YouTube's security protocols. If we uncheck the option as I did now, VLC will no longer send cookies during streaming, and this problem is solved. There's another fairly advanced tweak. Go to Tools, Preferences, Input Encoders at the top, and disable Hardware Accelerated Decoding, which is set to Automatic. By default, it's set to automatic, and we disable it. Select Disable from here and save. Why did I do this? Because there may be an incompatibility between hardware accelerated decoding, that's what I just disabled. I removed the automatic option, and the YouTube video codec. And this can cause playback issues, so we'll just disable it. Another problem could be with YouTube AV1 streaming, so there may be compatibility issues with YouTube AV1 streaming in VLC. So what do we do? Go to Tools, Preferences, Input Encoders at the bottom. Select All, and then go to Input Encoders. And here, where it says Preferred Video Resolution, we'll see it here. This Preferred Video Resolution option says Best Available. So let's expand this drop-down menu a bit, this window, Preferred Video Resolution Best Available. Let's choose another one. We can choose Full HD or Low Definition. I can choose Full HD. However, the important thing is to remove the best available one. Let's use Full HD in this case. This is done to solve problems with YouTube streaming in VLC. Another, one last change you can make is to change the cache size because the file cache, the VLC rating cache, has a certain size set by default. We can now see it, and if we change it, we can optimize the way videos are loaded into the buffer during playback, making the buffering process more efficient. Buffering can cause problems when playing a stream, and we'll see if we can change it, maybe it'll solve the problem. I went to Tools, Preferences, Everything, down here. Once we've done that, we go to Encoder Input. Here, we go down this long menu, we need to find the Advanced option, which I'm having a hard time reading right now. Here it is, Advanced File Cache Duration to 1000. Network Cache Duration to 1000 you can see that they are both set to 1000. Let's increase the file cache. It can be increased to 1800, or we can increase it to 2000. So let's make it 2000. Instead, let's also increase the network cache duration, which is not 2000. Let's make it 1400, 1500. These can be two values that can be important. So 2000 and 1500. File cache to 2000 and network cache to 1500. Let's save. And this is the last change we can make. If all this doesn't work, all these changes don't work, after removing the antivirus. After copying the YouTube.lua file, renaming it to YouTube, Luak, even after changing all these VLC settings, then you can reset VLC's preferences. What I'm saying isn't a paradox. Below. I click on Reset Preferences, which will undo all the changes I've made. Why did I say this? This actually needs to be done at the beginning, before starting work because VLC retains the settings we change. It's not that once we restart it, the default settings are restored. In fact, the changes we've made are retained. If there are changes that are incompatible with being able to view a YouTube file, this can indeed cause problems. Obviously, once the settings have been restored, 
You can then run all the tests I mentioned, such as the cookies issue, the cache size issue, the hardware accelerated decoding issue, which should be disabled. And obviously keeping the antivirus disabled, allowing the firewall to access and allowing VLC with that option we set to public and not private. So, by making all these changes, we'll see if we can find a solution. I repeat, I don't know if YouTube will like this video very much. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, give it a like and subscribe to the channel.